Hello everyone, this is Mal Phoenix here, and no oh boy, this might be a deadly review because this episode will be about a game called Deadly Towers. It was released in 1987 in North America, and it was one of the very early action RPG games on the NES. It was also developed by Lenar and published by Border Bun. Before talking about the gameplay or the story or any of that shit, let's take a look at the cover for a quick second. Now if you ask me, it does not look that great. Like, what the fuck is with the random tail over there? Well, if you look at the other side, it looks like it's a part of a dragon. Well, I don't know what the fuck happened, but it looks like that they did not finish the cover. So that may be why that there's like that dark blue border going around it, because they didn't finish it. Well, anyways, I just wanted to mention that because that just kind of bothered me for a second. But now, let's start off with the story. It starts with your name character, Prince Myers, doing his own business, and a shadow cami named Khan rises from the lake and tells Myers that a demon named Rubus is using seven bells to summon monsters and to take over the kingdom and now Myers has to burn the bells with fire to stop the conundrum that happened. And that is pretty much where the game begins. But one thing about the story that makes it really different is the fact that there is no saving a princess, which is kind of a breath of fresh air if you think about it. Now the gameplay is a one point perspective scrolling, which is fine, but the game is pretty different from most other games in its genre. Because instead of swinging his sword, he instead throws his sword. But you can only throw one sword at a time until it either hits the end of the screen or an enemy. And I really wonder, how many fucking swords does he have? Or could it just be the same damn sword but it just teleports after hitting something? But if I were you, I would recommend using a turbo controller because this game can get really sore on your thumbs. And you can kill the enemies a hell of a lot faster too. But either way, this game is still really fucking hard and it is very frustrating. And it also doesn't help that this game is pretty much like a maze and you never know where the fuck you're going half the time. And you're most likely gonna die a lot because this game has a lot of cryptic shit all over the place. And then there are some places where you have to like go through a wall or like walk over a certain part of the floor to get to a new area. Like I know if you walk over a certain floor so you can go to a shop. So most of the time when you're playing this you're pretty much just walking around mindlessly not knowing what the fuck you're doing. Which is pretty much like, you know, not the greatest thing in the world. And especially sucks when you get killed for it too. FUCKING SHIT! But the boss fights are kinda lame cause you go close to them and you shoot your sword at them, which I know that sounds stupid, but we already addressed that already. And they don't attack you when they're getting attacked, so it just makes it really easy. But not by much, cause when you die, you have to start all the way back at the beginning, which is a fucking asshole. But at least when you want to continue the game, they at least give you the courtesy to like put the password in there for you. Unless if you shut off the game, then you're pretty much fucked. And it really sucks when you get hit, because when you get hit, you go bouncing all over the fucking place and you can fall off a ledge like that and die instantly. Now from all the shit that I've said, it really does prove that this game is really deadly. So let's move on. Now the graphics for this game actually don't look that bad, like I know the scenery and stuff actually looks nice, but what the fuck is with the monsters all? You get a flame moving around, blue balls, a moving puddle of water, some arch thing, fire raining up, like that makes fucking sense. A little tiny scorpion, so at least there's something that at least looks describable. And a fucking bat. Which, to be you, bats are fucking annoying in video games. But for the most part, the, all the monsters in this game just look pretty fucking retarded. Oh, but I also forgot about the best monster. A fucking body of wind that tries to kill you. But I think you get the idea that it's just all a bunch of lazy ass developed monsters. Now as for the music, I personally think it's pretty good. In fact, some of the songs in this game can actually be pretty catchy, but there are other songs in this game that can get really annoying really fast. Like for an example, if you move to a next area and it'll play the exact same song, but you're gonna be listening to the exact same piece over and over again. Now that is irritating. But other than that, I think it's pretty alright. One thing that I have to mention that really annoys the fuck out of me with this game is that when you get hit and when you go bouncing, sometimes you'll bounce into a wall and sometimes you'll get stuck onto the wall for a second and it'll take some jittering to get out of there. And don't you think it looks funny that when you fall down in this game he kinda like spins around? Kinda looks like he's falling down drunk. Wee! Gotta love me some Jagger! Now if you want to buy this game, it's very cheap and I don't really see it around here often though but I definitely know for a fact that it's not rare. Also, for a random game like this, made in the year 1987, it was actually one of the most top-selling games at that time, which is pretty interesting for such a random game. But of course, sales does not mean that it makes it better or anything, it's just something that's interesting. 
Also, in Japan, this game was originally supposed to be called Hell's Bells. But I actually find that kind of funny because of the song Hell's Bells by ACDC. But if they actually did name it that, though, I could just imagine them playing the song Hell's Bells in an 8-bit format. Now that would be kind of cool. Now for those of you who are asking about the rating already, well, I have a feeling that a lot of you will probably be thinking that I'm going to give this game a really fucking low score. Well, let's just get on with it, and if I were to rate this game, I'd probably have to give it a 6 out of 10. Yeah, I have a feeling that you guys are probably very surprised right now. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that think this game is really, really shitty. But to be honest though, I can totally understand why people would think it's really shitty though. But to me, I don't think it's as bad as what most people say it is though. And I played a lot more shittier games on the NES than this game, so that's why I'm not giving it as low a score. Also, it's just not as bad, because it does have some amusement factors to it. So to me, a 6 out of 10 is fair in my books. And I have a weird feeling though that I probably might be one of the very few people that actually does somewhat enjoy this game a little bit. Though I find that the difficulty and the confusingness of this game is pretty much what brings it down though. Like, it's a pretty frustrating game to start out with, if you ask me. So there's not much else I can have to say about this game, but I really hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching and commenting.